Hola amigos, que tal? It's Drew here from Spain Speaks with an update video today. We'll have a quick look at some of the press here in Spain, find out what is happening in the newspapers around the country today. We'll have a quick look at El Mundo, El País, El Confidencial, and RTVE, the state broadcaster. Then at the end of the video, we'll go into the comment section and check out what is happening there. As I said, only a short video today. Time has got away from me, so I can't put out a normal length video today. So I apologize for that in advance. So let's get straight into the news. And as you can imagine, the vaccine plan is dominating headlines again here today. We can see that headline there on the left. Madrid amenaza con cerrar los grandes centros de vacunación si el gobierno no envía más dosis. So Madrid is threatening to close the large vaccination centers if the government does not send more doses. So more threats from the Madrid government to add fuel to the fire that is raging between the central government and the Madrid community. As we know, there are elections scheduled for the 4th of May here in Madrid. They're basically turned into national elections because the Prime Minister, Mr. Sanchez, is actively campaigning for his party in these elections. As we can see there from that headline, Madrid threatening to shut down those vaccination centers if they don't get their hands on more doses. Because as we know, the central government is responsible for distributing doses around the country to the 17 autonomous communities here in Spain. And of course, Madrid flexing its muscles as the capital here in Spain, and also one of the biggest and strongest autonomous communities in the country. So we'll see if Prime Minister Sanchez and the central government take the threats from Madrid seriously or not. We'll see. And just below that, there is another headline about Madrid having to impose restrictions on 17 basic health centers and three municipalities. And Madrid, again, is unfortunately one of the worst autonomous communities here in Spain when it comes to health data. In fact, I think Navarra in the north of Spain is the only autonomous community here with worse data than Madrid. And will that data, a worsening health situation, and those restrictions that we mentioned before have an influence on the results come the 4th of May? We'll see, but I think the incumbent president, Ms. Ayuso, is still leading the polls. Now we'll leave El Mundo there and head into El País, check out what is happening there. And one of the main articles El País is going with here is about the AstraZeneca vaccine. And we can see the headline, Un estudio revela que el 97% de la inversión para desarrollar la vacuna de AstraZeneca fue pública. A study reveals that 97% of the investment to develop the AstraZeneca vaccine was public. And just below that it reads 170 world personalities asked for the temporary suspension of patents to increase the available doses. So that is also another interesting debate that has arisen in recent times about these COVID-19 vaccines. If that is true and 97% of the investment for AstraZeneca was public, should they release the patents in order to get more doses made? Should they make the patents available so that more doses can be made and therefore try to put an end to this pandemic sooner rather than later? That is an interesting bait that needs to be had. Now, there's an article here about the Chinese economy, and it reads, La economía china consolida su recuperación de la crisis con un crecimiento del 18,3%. So the Chinese economy consolidates its recovery from the crisis with a GDP growth of 18.3%. The year-on-year -year increase is the highest since records began, although the data for the first quarter shows a cooling compared to the end of 2020. So there we go, a tale of two worlds at the moment, the Chinese economy and European economies, especially here in Spain. We saw that the government had revised their provisions for 2021, and the Chinese economy here, 18.3% growth, and it's the highest since records began. So obviously things moving along beautifully in China at the moment, and it's a shame that we can't say the same thing for the European Union, unfortunately. Now we'll leave El País there, go to El Confidencial, check out what is happening there. We'll have a look at the vaccination data, which we have been doing in recent times, and we can see that we're up to 6.86% of the population vaccinated with both doses of the COVID-19 vaccine. We'll see what's happening down there in Andalusia, and we can see that they are now sitting at 6.62%, Valencia coming in at 5.88%, Madrid 6.5%, and Murcia 6.69% of the population vaccinated with both doses. And we'll have a look at the main story that El Confidencial is going with here today about the government and the money that it is hoping to get from Brussels. So let's click on that one. And the headline reads that the government will omit warnings from Brussels on the funds plan pending the 4th of May. The deadline for submitting the plan is April the 30th, four days before the elections. 
The intention is to leave open the most controversial measures to avoid interference in the campaign. And of course, here we're talking about labor market reforms, pension reforms, and tax reforms, reforms that are going to most affect people living in this country. And as we just read, the government doesn't want to reveal what they're going to do regarding those three points before the 4th of May in case it has an influence on those election results. So maybe there is some bad news on the horizon for people here in Spain when it comes to the labor market, taxes, and pensions. We'll wait and see. Now we'll leave El Confidencial there and go to RTVE, check out what is happening there. And there's an article here about the former treasurer of the Partido Popular Party, Luis Barthenas, and that 58 million euros that he apparently has in Switzerland. So we'll click on that one. And the headline reads, the National Court is asking Switzerland to unblock 58 million euros that belongs to Barthenas and others convicted in the Gertel case. Now, I don't know about you, but it seems that this Gertel corruption case is never ending here in Spain. And of course, this case still making headlines and the government wants to get their hands on that 58 million euros that is sitting in those Swiss bank accounts. And we'll see because money in corruption cases like this normally disappears for good and nobody ever sees it again. So hopefully, as I said, it will come back to Spain. Now let's leave the news there and go into the comment section. We'll check out what is happening there today. And we'll have a look at this one here from Simon. Hi, Stuart. Great update as usual. For a few minutes each day, it kind of feels like I'm part of Spain and can't wait to get back. Keep up the good work and don't forget to add some Spanish. It's a great little test of our understanding. Yes, Simon, thanks for the comment and glad you liked the videos. I try to throw in a little bit of Spanish when I do videos like this one, the one that I've done today where I read the headlines out in Spanish, or at least I read a couple of headlines out today in Spanish. I try not to do it too much because I know that not everybody is interested in the Spanish language, but for people like yourself, I hope that it helps. And from reading the comments every day, I know that there are a lot of people wanting to get back down here to Spanish haven't been able to do it since the pandemic began, unfortunately. But we'll have to wait and see, of course, whether the vaccination plan can have an effect on tourism this year, whether people will be allowed to come down to Spain. Nobody really knows yet. We know that the government wants to open the country up again for tourism. We've heard about vaccination passports, but I'm still not sure whether they are up and running yet or not. So hopefully people will be able to come down to Spain this year and have a safe holiday or have a safe time in the country. Let's hope. And we'll have a look at this one here from Martin. Great video, Stuart. Muchas gracias. Tengo un buen día, amigo. Yeah, Martin, thanks for the comment. Y que tengas tú y todos un buen día también. On that note, I'll start to wrap the video up. Questions and comments, please leave them in the section below. I want to say thanks to all of the people that got in contact with me yesterday regarding that matter in Barcelona, the gentleman that asked me for some help with his son, who unfortunately is in hospital there at the moment. Thank you for getting in contact with me, and I have passed some of your details on to the gentleman concerned. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. I'll see you in the next one. Hasta luego.